if your life is extremely out of tune right now, then adding a bit of symphony to it might fix it. And it also comes in two sizes. Hey everyone, Mukul here. So Antec sent me these two AIOs and in this video, I will do what I usually do when I have two different sized AIOs from the same brand. That is to compare the hell out of them. The 240mm AIO I got is in black color and the 360mm one is in white. Yep, pretty diverse. The material finish on both of these AIOs feels decent enough. And the white paint finish on the 360mm AIO felt pretty good too. The fins on the radiators for both of these AIOs had no weird bends on them and were pretty clean. These AIOs currently support all the current AMD mounts up to AM4 and Intel's LGA1700 socket too. Most of the brackets for both the platforms are metal. Only the LGA1700 socket has a plastic backplate. All the brackets and mounts of the 240 and even 360mm AIO are black in color. And surprisingly, the 360mm AIO came with TR4 mounting brackets too, as Antec was pretty sure a 240mm AIO will not be sufficient for it. But shockingly, they have not mentioned this on the product page, which is kinda like an axe to their own foot. And of course, both the AIOs came with a ton of screws, washers and standoffs. And a small dose of thermal paste is there too. Uh, well, wow, this is such a lazy shot. The supplied manual is this one page print out and the instructions will not be easy to decipher if you aren't someone who has been building PC for a long time. The AIO fans are pre-installed on the radiator which saves a decent amount of time if you are opting for the same orientation. You can of course remove and mount them on the other side if you want. The fan stated air pressure is 2.1 mm H2O which is decent enough for static fans. They also have noise damping rubber pads on the four corners. And the fans along with the pumps are ARGB controlled as RGB without an address isn't even considered proper RGB anymore. The tubes bend quite easily as a matter of fact. Uh, it felt as if they really love bending. And the sleeves are also of decent quality. I swear I have seen these ones on many AIOs now. The pump has a notable size and looks quite chunky. The mirror finish on it might give an impression that the pump comes with a display on it, but these are nothing but a few nicely designed RGB elements that I will show later. The copper base plate covers a good amount of area too and is almost completely flat. Installing these two AIOs one by one for testing without having a dedicated test bench took a lot of effort, but someone had to do it. And it should be obvious that the installation process of both of these AIOs is exactly the same. I have a Ryzen 9 3900X, so I'm going to install these AIOs on top of that chip and test them at different voltages. So to install this on an AMD chip, I first had to remove the stock AMD mount and backplate from the motherboard. Then I chose these group of washers, standoffs and screws for the AMD platform. I was easily able to do so as their packaging had clear labels on them. Then on the common backplate, I installed the screws with their washers on the correct hole, which was shown on the manual page. But even if you want to just skip looking at the manual page and try your luck by just aligning the backplate on the holes, then that can also work. But make sure you remove the sticker from the pump copper base plate, otherwise you'd have no idea why this is happening. And at the other end, which is the main end, I inserted these four plastic standoffs. Now these standoffs won't fit tightly until you put the pump over it and then screw in the pump too. But before you can just easily put the pump there, it will remind you that more installation is still left as you have to screw in these brackets on the sides of the pump before it can land up anywhere else. Then I applied the thermal paste in the weirdest manner possible to stay true to my character. Installing the pump will be a nightmare if you're trying to shoot and install it at the same time like me. But it will definitely be easier if you have a couple more hands to help you with this part. And by a couple more hands, I mean a separate human. Don't just go out and try to find a pair of hands lying somewhere in your city. As the backplate needs some serious pressure on it as you try to put the pump on and then screw its screws alternatively. Screw its screws. Even after the pump gets installed and it fits perfectly, the screws will keep rotating endlessly and this happened with both the AIOs. This is happening because the free play carries to the screws on the back too, uh, as somehow the locks on the back plate don't really keep them locked. You had one job. But because the pump sat pretty nicely and wasn't loose at all, well that kinda assured me that the installation is over. Uh, almost. Then I simply installed the radiator on the top shelf of the case and that made the fans face downwards so that they can throw the hot air outside from the top of the case. The fans connectors and headers were already daisy chained in both of the AIOs so this will definitely help you save a few precious minutes. The SATA power connector that will power the pump will connect to the power connector from your power supply and then the three pin power connector will go on the AIO pump header on your motherboard or the CPU fan header. 
I also daisy chained the ARGB connector from the pump to the fans and then connected that to the ARGB header on the motherboard. And the three pin power connector from the fans will go to any of the fan connectors on the motherboard. Yeah, you can go wild with it. Well, yeah, that was definitely some work. But yeah, the AIOs looked really gorgeous to me once completely installed. The pump design looks pretty nice and the RGB elements are ample bright. The white 360mm AIO looked gorgeous too and had a nice distinctive look to it, even inside a black theme case. As a couple of years back, that was all the theme we had as an option. The fans and the pump easily got controlled by the MSI motherboard software. Uh, this made me feel happy that we still control these little machines and not vice versa. And when it comes to the job these AIOs have been built to do, both the AIOs perform darn good for the price they come at. It's pretty hot here, so the test couldn't be quite conclusive at 200 watts mark for the 240mm AIO, but it was pretty nice to see it perform so well at around the 150 watt mark. Anything above 150 watt mark will be a challenge for the 240mm AIO, especially if you live in a warm city without an AC in your room. But this is where the 360mm AIO option looks more viable, which will be good for even chips that can produce heat around 175 watt mark. Also, it was pretty nice to see a good difference between these two different sized AIOs as compared to my experience when I compared the same sized AIOs by Thermaltake recently. Pushing the fan speed to 1600 rpm manually did improve the temperatures just slightly, but I am not sure why I had to do it manually. The motherboard should have kicked this itself. The fans of both of these AIOs don't produce noise which is more than what I expected anyway. So the Symphony 240mm looks like a great option for processors up to the Ryzen 5s and Intel i5s and the 361 looks good enough for processors up to Ryzen 7s and even a few older Ryzen 9s like the Ryzen 3900X. But for Intels, I would say don't go above the Intel i7s, especially if it's from their 12th generation family because that generation has too many little and big members in it. I think there is a reason why these AIOs perform so well for the price. There's rarely a 360mm AIO that costs around 8000 rupees or 100 US dollars. So yeah, the installation process was a bit lengthy and I guess that's where Antec decided to save some of the investment by not opting for a more modern mounting design. But they have rightly diverted that investment into how the AIO looks and performs. And as 99.9% .9 of you would just install the AIO once and will be done with it for a few years, going through the cumbersome installation process once uh, well it doesn't feel like a huge task so this is about it for a video where i talked about some stuff that can help keep some of the other stuff inside your pc cool also if you end up buying any of these aios then uh, for that the affiliate links will be in the description below you can also hop onto our discord server for more chit chat on relevant content so stay safe humans mewbot with another aio couple out <laughs>